Hello, we're going to see where this one goes. I'm not entirely sure, but I just needed to talk to someone, so here we are. I get asked a lot about this tattoo. It says make, and it seems pretty self-explanatory, right? I mean, it says it right there. It's written literally on my flesh. But I wanted to talk about the reason that I got it, what it means to me. When I was a kid, I loved magicians. I loved magic. I always would ask for a magician for my birthday, and I would carry around my little wand. I love watching magic be performed because you just, you just smile. It's that sense of awe, that wonderment when you're a kid, you just smile and you, you kind of laugh a little bit, you giggle because you're just amazed by what's happening in front of you, that somebody could do this, that this is possible. And I, I wanted that, I wanted to be able to inspire that into people. I loved magic because it made people happy. It made them excited about the world, about everything. I remember when David Copperfield made the Statue of Liberty disappear, and that blew my mind. Nowadays, I don't use a wand. I have a camera, and I, I <laughs> stupidly, I like to think of it like, what's Bruce Wayne without his bat suit? What's Tony Stark without his Iron Man suit? What am I without a camera? It's my superpower. It's what I use to tell stories. Without it, I'm just 50% of a person. I'm 50% Jake. But when I have a camera, unstoppable. That is me. When I have it, when I'm looking down the lens, what's captured in there is mine, and I was able to create it, and I was able to show it to people. And I create magic. I can make the Statue of Liberty disappear with a camera. That's, that's me. That's who I am. And I need to make things. I don't make things for me. I make things to share me. That's the purpose of it, because I can't fully express who I am normally. I need this. I need these videos, all of them. When you make stuff, no matter what it is, a painting, a piece of writing, a song, a video, anything, it's part of you. It's who you are. You're spilling it out onto the page or onto the frames, all 24 of them every single second capturing you in that moment forever. It's a time capsule, these pieces that we create of who we were. And I've never been good at expressing myself in real life. I just haven't, I'm not very good at it. I've lived my whole entire life in books and movies and music and video games, and those were my escape. That's how I expressed who I was. You know, I hid away in the pages of Ellis instead of the pages of real life, instead of the folds of people's lives. Because it was, it was easier for me to understand those worlds. I could imagine them in my mind. I could be a part of them. I could explore them using my imagination. It allowed me to create things that weren't. When you make something, when I make something, when we make things, it's easy to forget when you look at these things how much effort was put into them. How much time. And it's not just time, but it's an emotion. You know, you can go to an art gallery, you can go to a museum, and you just instantly look at a painting and be like, oh, I don't like it. But then think about the effort the person put into that, what they were going through, why they made it. They didn't just make it to be immediately dismissed. They made it because they wanted to share who they were. They made it because they wanted to be vulnerable in that moment, within that piece. 10 years from now, I'll have changed, but this, this moment in time will always be me, will always be this. When I make things, I get very attached to them because it's, it's a part of me. Everything, even if it's a little stop motion, a minute 30 video. That's who I am. The way that the pieces move, the way that the things get torn apart or come together, that's me. That's an expression of who I am. Even if it's something me talking about ghosts or me talking about how much you can eat, the way that the camera flows, the way that the words come out, those are my words. The, the way the camera moves, even though I'm not physically moving it, it's, it's how I imagined it to move. I always like to think about in Donnie Darko when he has that beautiful fluid come out of his chest, right? And it just floats out and it's this fluid movement. That's the kind of movement that I want. That's the kind of motion that's beautiful, that flows, that lives and it breathes and it's incredible. And to be able to share that with people, is incredible. I make things for people. I make them so they know who I am, so somebody can understand me. I, I really believe that when you look at somebody's work, at the things that they pour hours or years into, you understand who they are. 
It's like Dorian Gray who has the painting of himself that always ages yet he doesn't. That's, these are <laughs> my portrait. This is my portrait, making up who I am. It's a brush stroke on a canvas. Every single video is a different stroke, a different stroke, a different stroke, a different stroke. And hopefully it'll reveal a big picture one day, maybe. I'm always asked when I do interviews, what's your favorite video? What's the best video you've ever made? And my answer is always next week's video. Next week's video is going to be the best one. You need to keep pushing yourself. You need to keep trying to be the best that you can in every facet of your life, I believe. When it comes to how you interact with other human beings, when it comes to the things that you make, when it comes to the way that you cook or the way that you clean. And this is probably a bad example because my apartment's kind of messy. I just got a lot of boxes, so let's just clear that up. But all of those things shape who you are. The way that you talk to somebody on the phone that's in customer service. If you say thank you, after getting what your water filled at the restaurant. Just little things like that make up who you are as a human being. And just like with a video that I make, or just like a painting that you make, or a piece of writing, you want people to appreciate it, even if they don't like it, because 100% of the people are never going to like what you do. You just want people to understand. It's a part of you. It needs to be honest. So I make things endlessly, always and forever, and it just absorbs your life where all you think about is, what can I make next? Hmm, how could I use that in a video? I was watching a, this beautiful documentary last night about flowers. What kind of video could I make where I could include these beautiful time lapses of flowers or beautiful time lapses in the desert of stars going by in the sky? And we can see them beautifully and the clouds cut through the air. How can I capture that? How can I make that even more beautiful? When people tell me that there's a certain genre of music they don't like, or there's a thing that they don't like, I'm always skeptical, because I think you should observe it, experience it, because it allows you to then have a better understanding of the world, of things around you. Like right now, it's misting outside, and I wish I could just stand on my roof and film this video out there with all the noise and all the dampness and ugliness, but it's beautiful. That's an experience that I have now, that I then get to share in some form with you and it's amazing so that's why i make things because it's 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 me it's a book bound in flesh not the necronomicon because that one's just nothing good happens from that so anyway as long as there is blood pumping through my veins it's not goodbye it's <laughs>